February 18. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Saint Leo, Pope of Rome. Leo was born in Italy of devout parents. He first served as archdeacon under Pope Sixtus III, and following the death of Sixtus, he was elevated against his will to the throne of the Pope of Rome. When Attila, with his hands, drew near to Rome and was prepared to destroy and burn the city, Leo came out before him in his episcopal vestments. He subdued the wrath of the leader of the Huns and averted the destruction of Rome. Attila allowed himself to be counseled by this holy man, but was also frightened by a vision of the apostles Peter and Paul, who stood alongside Leo and threatened him with flaming swords. Not only did St. Leo save Rome, but he also contributed much to save orthodoxy from the heresy of Eutychius and Dioscorus. This heresy consisted in the merging of the divine and human natures of Christ into one, and consequently the denial of the two wills in the person of the Lord Saviour. Because of this, the Fourth Ecumenical Council at Chalcedon 451 AD was convened, at which time the epistle of St. Leo was read. St. Leo had written this epistle and placed it on the tomb of St. Peter, who corrected it. Before his death, Leo spent forty days in fasting and prayer at the tomb of St. Peter, beseeching him to tell him whether his sins were forgiven. The Apostle Peter appeared to him and said that all of his sins were forgiven except sins committed in the ordination of priests. Whence it is evident how grave a sin is to ordain one who is unworthy. The saint again fell to prayer until he was told that even those sins were forgiven. He peacefully gave up his soul to the Lord. Saint Leo reposed in the year 461 A.D. The choir of the saints has found the fountain of life and the door of paradise. Saint Flavian Flavian became patriarch of Constantinople following Saint Proclus. He was a contemporary of, of Pope Leo. He fought resolutely against Eutychus and Dioscorus but did not live to see the, the triumph of orthodoxy at the Fourth Ecumenical Council, for prior to that he was so mercilessly beaten and trampled upon at a heretical council in Ephesus that he died there. Flavian was a faithful soldier of Christ, a courageous defendant and confessor of the Orthodox faith. He reposed in the year 449 May AD. I also find a way through repentance. I am the sheep that was lost. Call me up to you, O Savior, and save me. Reflection With great difficulty and with even greater effort and sacrifice, the tares of heresy were sifted from the wheat of the truth of orthodoxy. The heretics have always made use of lower means and base persons in undermining orthodoxy. Archmandrite Eutychus of Constantinople and Patriarch Dioscorus of Alexandria, who spread the heretical teaching that there were not two natures in Christ, divine and human, but rather one nature, had as their ally in imperial court the vile eunuch Chrysaphius. Empress Odoxia was secretly aligned with them. Patriarch Flavian, like a lion, fearlessly defended orthodoxy. In this he was assisted by Porcaria, the sister of the emperor. The eunuch Chrysaphius presented to Emperor Theodosius the most disgusting slanders against Flavian, so that the emperor would remove him from the throne and replace him with the heretic Eutychius. When this and all else failed, the heretics plotted to kill Flavian. At the Robert Council of Ephesus, 431 AD, 
They beat him and trampled upon him so badly that St. Flavian gave up his soul to God on the third day. What happened in the end? At the Fourth Ecumenical Council in Chalcedon 451 AD, Eutychus and Dioscorus were anathemized. This eunuch was ousted from the court and shamefully ended his life. The Empress Odoxia was banished from Constantinople to Palestine. Flavian and Pulcheria were proclaimed saints, and the Orthodox faith was victoriously confirmed. You who did fashion me of old out of nothingness, and with your image divine did honor me. Contemplation Contemplate the Lord Jesus among the Pharisees and scribes, how he made every effort to raise up the Pharisees and scribes and to save them, and how they made every effort to overthrow and kill him, how he wished to correct their every thought and word, and how they wished to twist his every thought and word, how he was saddened that he could not bring them to life, and how they were saddened that they were unable to kill him. But because of transgressions of your commandments did return me again to the earth from whence I was taken. Homily on the struggle of the weak with the Almighty. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. John 12:10. They agreed among themselves to first kill the Maker and then kill his work. For the reason Lazarus was the work of Christ. What is the use they incredulously thought to kill the miracle worker and to leave a living witness of his greatest miracle? For then the people would be inflamed at them as evil doers. But nevertheless it happened that they killed Christ and missed Lazarus. And then they and those of like mind killed scores of his apostles and overlooked hundreds. Then they killed thousands and overlooked hundreds of thousands. Then they killed hundreds of thousands and overlooked millions. Finally, it became clear that behind their backs, the slain were resurrected to life like mown grass, and those designated to be killed grew as sown grass before the faces of the murderers. In vain from their point of view did the wise Gamaliel said, But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Acts 5.39 Those who wage war against God throughout the centuries have sharpened their feebleness in vain to mow down the crop of God. The more they cut down, the more the crops of God grew luxuriantly. O oh, demented combatants against Christ! Those of that time and the present, your bludgeon rebounds from the city of Christ and strikes your own hovel, crushing it into dust and ashes. Throughout the ages you have had enough allies, besides the devil, which you were heretics, idolatries, fanatics, soothsayers, divinators, depraved princes and wealthy men, tyrants and all insensitive sinners. Up to now, you have been defeated, and without any doubt, all of your allies, together with you, will be defeated to the end of time. For this, O Almighty and Irresistible Lord, glory and praise be to Thee forever. Amen. Hallelujah.